Welcome everyone, it's good to see you, good evening. My name is Carlos Borges, and as big as I am right now, trust me, I am an ICI kid. Uh, I just keep thinking about that video we just saw, it was very powerful. The way God has used ICI to help that family. And uh, when I was younger, I came from a family situation that was trouble. And ICI helped my family as well, let me tell you that. As a 10 year old, I came to ICI. And I came from a family that was gang ridden. My mom and dad were both into the gang scene. My mom was 19 by the time she had all three of us. And my baby brother, he had cerebral palsy, he was disabled. My dad, he struggled with alcoholism. And my mother, she didn't have much of a childhood, so she would often leave me, to, at the oldest, to take care of my baby brother and my other baby brother who was disabled while she went and party. And it was very scary because he could get sick at any moment. As his condition uh, worsened, my dad left the house. And as a kid growing up in the neighborhood I grew up in, just like a lot of the ICI kids, I saw violence, I saw drug deals, I saw destructive role models. Many of the adults in my life were consistently doing wrong and then they were being respected for it. And I saw what many ICI kids see today, that the, many, that the adults that are entrusted to guide and mold were the very ones that were leading me into a pattern of sin, leading me into spiritual blindness. Then one day, I was at school and a kid invited me to ICI. And I went to ICI. And when I went to ICI, I saw something real different. I saw adults that were full of the love of Jesus. Oh, it was so different. I saw Jesus, through ICI, I saw Jesus coming into my neighborhood to have a relationship with me. During club, I saw leaders who encouraged and loved me regardless of my athletic ability. I saw Jesus speaking during Bible study as the Bible was open and explained to me at my level and at my context. When I went to camp, I saw God's creation. By the way, that was me sliding down that thing. I don't know if you all noticed that. It was, it was not a baby beluga, it was me, okay? I still go to camp. As ICI leaders allowed me into their home and practiced hospitality, I saw family meals and family prayer and devotions. When I went to church with my ICI leader, that became my spiritual family as well. Ultimately, God opened my eyes to see him, and I became a believer at ICI. But you know, when you become a believer, that doesn't mean all the stuff of your family goes away. And uh, one day I woke up and my mom was screaming. My baby brother wasn't breathing. And he did, uh, he passed away. I was 13. And my ICI leaders, they were there for me. My parents were distraught. You see, because of the lifestyle they live, helping, that, helping my baby brother was the only thing that gave them any worth or value or feel good about you know, the life they were living. So they were distraught. But you know, my parents knew hope. They saw what ICI did in my life. So guess what, my dad went to the same church that I went to. And in a couple weeks, he was a believer. And soon after, my mom went on a retreat with some ICI missionaries, some ladies, and she became a believer. See, my parents were never married. And then soon, as they both became believers, they started dating. <laughs> and as they started dating, my dad would bring her home at an early time to, to be careful with their purity. And he actually did not move into our house as they dated. He roomed with an ICI missionary. They soon became engaged. And I hope you guys see this picture, and I hope you see how things are, how, how, how God is using ICI. Let me tell you about this wedding. You never heard a wedding like this before. At my parents' wedding, my dad had a new set of friends, so I got to be his best man along with my other brother. And my mom's dad had passed away before, uh, long ago. And so I was also the father of the bride. So my, my brother and I gave my mom to wed my dad, and then we stepped on over and we were on my dad's side. That's what God did in my family's life. I love that story. I'm glad it's my story too. <laughs> when I was 13, I taught my first Bible study, and there was this ICI missionary named David Woodier. He had this famous slash infamous 
checkbook kind of thing that he would kind of walk around with. It was a pad. And I was teaching my first lesson, and he was just checking me on as I was teaching. But even so, I desire so much to be a teacher. As I got to see kids uh, learn about God and kids learn and be educated, I felt a passion to become a teacher. So on the ICR scholarship, I went to Trinity International University and got my elementary education degree. Now, I had been discipled to go back into my neighborhood. And so I went back and I got married. And I live in the same neighborhood that I grew up in. And I started teaching at a public school. When I first started teaching in this public school 18 years ago, it was really bad. It was terrible. I'm not going to lie. But I'm here to say 18 years later, later, it received the highest ranking that CPS gives. It gives. It's a level one plus school. I want you all to know that students have been saved by my ministry there, my unofficial ministry there. I've taken kids camping. I've done everything that I was trained to do in ICI, what they did with me. I did the same thing, but in the public school context. 30 years later, I see ICI in my family. I see ICI and its impact in my students. I have students around the city right now who are impacting uh, the, 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 the whole city in various ministries. I also see the impact that ICI has had to make a difference in the lives of the kids that come in. And I'm just here to tell you right now, I learned a long time ago, I figured this out, that there are people that need to partner because this doesn't just happen automatically. We need partners. And so tonight, we have a challenge that I want to lay out to you all. And I don't lay this out uh, in a real meek manner, I really want to be bold and say I want you to consider the way that Jesus gives. In the sense that Jesus gave, no matter what, he gave whatever it took to bring people to himself. And so I want us to give sacrificially. We have a $400,000 goal tonight. That's our challenge. And I have some good news. We have a $150,000 challenge gift to go along with that. So I'm challenging you to help us reach our goal. I'm asking you to invest in these ICI kids. Right now, if there's a large envelope in the middle of your table, if you could please have someone open it, make sure everyone gets a card. There should also be a, be a pen. This is what the card looks like. You know, no matter what your financial situation is, every one of us in this room can do our part and make a difference. Here's how you can participate. First, you can provide a financial, a monthly gift. Secondly, you can also provide a special gift, or maybe even a gift by December 1st, December 31st. Options are on the card. Now, if we're going to reach this goal, it's going to take some major gifts. I'm here, I'm here knowing that there's some people that could commit up to 50,000 and other gifts. All these gifts we need. Search your heart, everyone. Let God guide you. There's some people here who are extremely blessed. You may not know the struggle, but you know deep down in in your heart that God has challenged you to give to what's going on. Some of you might want to give by credit card, electronic funds, tramp, or maybe a stock gift. Please turn over that ca in the card, and those options are there as well. If you'd like to support us through prayer, please complete the card and check that box. we like everyone to submit a card. If you'd like to stay connected to learn more so that you can spread, spread the message of what God is doing, then please check that. When you're completed, when you're done, when it's done, you can put this into the smaller envelope and then into the bigger envelope. We're going to put some music in the background, and we want you to consider how God might want you to partner with ICI. You might even want to talk to your spouse. As a former ICI kid, this ministry means so much to me. I just think about how it's been so holistic and how it's impacted my life. I want to finish with a quick story. When I had this, uh, I had this van, and I bought some, my, one of my kids convinced me to uh, fall into the trap, and I, I put 50 cent in this little machine that gives you a sticker. So I put that sticker up, it was a superhero. And then about four or five years ago, I went to an event with uh, Bill Dillon, the founder of ICI. And I grabbed the name tag at this event, and I wrote Bill Dillon, and I walked around. And everyone laughed. It was funny. People were like, 
Nah, he doesn't look like a bill, but it was funny. And uh, I want to tell you that I stuck that, I stuck that name tag with Bill Dillon's name on the top of my van because in my heart, he's a hero. And these ICI missionaries are, are heroes as well. So I want, you to, I want to ask you to partner. I want to challenge you to partner with them. Thank you for your support, and may God bless you.